So they'll be calling you a radical. What a metaphor. All these years, me standing next to this incredible willow and watching it slowly die. Like everything else in the ecology. I mean, it's unbelievable how the American freak show populace has gone along with this. I mean, real evidence, the truth, real science means absolutely nothing to these people. Zero. They are so hypnotized, so gone, they are so whacked on political dogma. It's where the water flows. It's where the wind blows. I mean, we're completely back to the cave. We're at the lowest common denominators. The issues we're having, I mean, we're, I mean, let's go all the way back. Well, we have gone all the way back. I mean, this isn't an advanced society. This society's been shredded into, I, I don't even know what you call it. Well, it's degenerate. I mean, when you will physically, mentally, politically go after wind and solar <laughs> in support of nuclear, the nuclear fairy tale is so over the top, it is unbelievable. The nuclear energy emperors have no clothes. This is going to be recorded in history as the greatest mental freak show in human history. Well, look at the propaganda. And the, the sad thing is you have everyone willing to go with it. We just got off the phone with ODFW. You know, of course, they're passing the buck because the truck crashed and spilled into the Columbia River. Oh, it's so great. I think they've lived, blah, 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 blah. You know, it wasn't intended to be going to the Columbia River. And when you release little fries or smolts into rivers, that have to be released gradually. It's biology. They have to feed. They feed on the really basic fundamental staff of life that are in rivers, you know. The ocean, we call that the soup, the cloud, you know. That's called plankton. In rivers, the bionutrogen, which is insects, the, the larva. There's no insects. I mean, you just dump them all at once. Talk about break the chain. I mean, aren't these people supposed to have biology degrees? I mean, apparently not. Well, of course, look at the biology they teach. I'm a butcher, what's a cow? I'm a baker, what's a cake? I'm a biologist, what's Fukushima? I mean, it's your pseudo facto theology. <laughs> I mean, everybody's all in, it's all theology. It's your pseudo de facto sociology. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's your pseudo de facto biology. Oh, it's your biology. It's the ecology, stupid. I mean, how can people go along? I mean, there are no scientists left. Everybody's lock stock because what's happened? They think the zenith of life is comfortability. So, uh, academia is a fraud. And I have proven academia is a giant fraud over this decade. I mean, it's copy and paste PhDs. They're not PhDs. Where's your field observation? People can't do observation. These are people, you know, I was talking to the president of the university yesterday about these people that run these, these professors, these, you know, that they come in, you know, straight A student, I went, oh, you know they're the worst. Straight A students are always the worst, most unsuccessful people. You know, what they've done to academia, turned it into the high school model. I don't think any of these people that go to work for these agencies and or have ever been camping. You know, we were talking about pine trees with a biologist and how the radiation, which I named Fuktonic, gets into the trees. I mean, that's unarguable proof. I mean, in science, you have to do field observation. You know, what am I gonna do? Put my work in the JSTOR? Are you kidding me? I mean, Aaron Schwartz downloads the server at MIT, a nonviolent crime, and gets 35 years in prison. That's a piece of shit, Obama dumber. Fucking Trump? He's your countercultist? He was president for four years. What did he do? Not to mention he had a Republican Senate and a Republican Congress. What did he do with it? He didn't do shit. Status quo. Matt with a beeve? I mean, if he's such a countercultist, I mean, all he had to do to get elected, I mean, to stay elected, was mention the Fukushima disaster, which he told me he would. I mean, 
These secret societies have completely taken over the country. You do know about the Federal Society. The Federal Society has really taken over all the courts. The courts, they're going to save us? <laughs> they're so illegitimate, it's unbelievable. The Federal Society, these secret societies, <laughs> wasn't that formed at Yale? Of course, I mean, it's skull and bones on Balco. It's the same old thing. You know, so it can't come from government officials. It can't come from agencies. It has to come from grassroots. Change has to come from grassroots. It has to be organic. It's like the art scene. It's all astroturf. Can't you see that it's all astroturf? It's all astroturf. I mean, I was talking to a guy from the Arts Council yesterday. This, that, that thing. It's pitiful. I mean. Your whole monarch thing's a joke. It's the clown circus. You bow to these billionaires who don't even live here. You'll, oh, I mean, it's all about the money, right? I mean, that's all it is. I mean, such a sick thesis. I mean, I used to say in my class, if you're here for a piece of paper, you should leave now. So, there's no thought. So, people have these jobs. They go to work for these agencies, and they little really legitimately think they don't have to do anything. You call them. I mean, it's like that mega welfare dairy next to mine who backhands the market worker on the face. He's a 300 pounder. He's been exploiting labor for 40 years. I mean, grotesquely. You know, drained off a wetland, just committed hundreds and hundreds of felonies. There's never no charges. You know, I remember calling because they dumped 1,800 cows of waste into the Weaver River that flows right into the Great Salt Lake and the biology that were existed in the day were saying, look at this is showing up. I wonder where it comes. And so I talked to the county, the county engineer. He said, yeah, we listened to you, Blanche. And finally we took a boat, went through all around the big bend in the river. And sure shit, just like you said, they dump it. They've got a big hole. They just dig it next to the river and dump it in. And it seeps right into the river. And we videoed it. We took pictures. You were right. So I said, so what are you going to do about it? Well, that's not my job. Did you pass it on to the DNR? who's over the top, believe it or not, the DNR rules over the top of the Environmental Quality Agency here, which is well-funded. Where are these young people with the biology degrees? Where are, who's running the show? Because political theater trumps it. Literally trumps it. They place these people in power that have no degrees, that have no field work, that have no thing. You know, and even if you have the degree, what are they teaching? Why do you think I went rogue? You know? I had to. I mean, the greatest PhD in human history, the greatest PhD opportunity in world history is the Fukushima, the effects. One guy took it from the day one. One guy on earth took it from day one. One. You know, where's your, you have to do observation. I mean, it's simple. First you hypothesize the knowledge. You can't be afraid to be wrong. But of course, YouTube and the whole herd and the whole crowd, because you know, the emperors at the gate, social media emperors, I don't know who the gatekeepers, they know everything. When they don't know shit, what has become, what was once consp conspiracy theory is now common knowledge and vice versa. I mean, you go back to Semmelweis, the Hungarian in Vienna, you know, decades and decades ahead of Louis Pasteur on germ theory. Germ theory had been kicked around. I mean, the original hypothesis had come out of Italy for hundreds of years. Oh, that's blasphemy. Little invisible germs came out. You know, he simply, let's have, he was a doctor. OBYG, <laughs> yeah. Wash your hands. Let's experiment and see how the mortality rate goes. Ten years. Observation. Recorded observation. Proved it. I mean, such a radical increase. Tenfold. Lives increased 10 times his patients versus other patients. The women were living. He proved it. Didn't matter. They still called him blasphemy, so on a contemporary, and they went after him. They attacked him viciously to the point it drove him insane. You know, I stood right there on the steps. I can relate. And he would scream and yell and rat and rave and carry on. What's the matter with you people? Blah, blah, blah. And they said he was crazy and threw him in the mental hospital and beating to death. That's a true story. There's a hospital, a clinic in Vienna, 
named after him. There should be statues of him in front of every single biology department in this country, including this one. It's like here. Where's the statue of Palm? Okay, Brody, this historian. I'm a butcher. What's a cow? I'm a baker. What's a cake? I'm an Ogden, Utah historian. Who's Paul McKay Brody? You, you know, down on Devoto Avenue. When are you going to change Monroe to Devoto Avenue? You know, and so I'm all over these guys. You know, they, oh, yeah, we've seen your videos. You know, they got, but these are people that are paid to do things. They don't do shit. I had a conversation. They were here yesterday, Ogden City. And I'm like, what are you letting happen on that building on 24th in Washington? You know, that's Mariner Echoes building. That's the first security bank building. That's where the World Bank and everything was all hatched. That guy's ripped it to shit for years, and you just stand by and let it happen? Where's it? I mean, what the hell? What is it you guys do? Tell me what you do. You don't use expense accounts to go on vacation? I mean, it's a dead end, by the way. Like I used to tell my students, it's a dead end. If you're here for a piece of paper and you think that a big fat paycheck where you're comfortable, you can work at home and just freaking blah, blah, blah. It's going to destroy you physically, mentally. You know, your health is your wealth. Comfortability is not the zenith of life. In fact, it's the opposite. And that's been proven over and over and over. You know, you have to be a productive member of this ecology, of this biology. And if you're, I mean, to go along with the nuclear thesis is so obscene and the propaganda and people fall for it. Oh, yeah, we're going to trade new scale. Yeah, uh, I'm going to go in and buy that. Why? Don't you have any thought process about the fundamental corruption that you're supporting? I mean, politicians, oh, they, they step in. The SEC, the SEC is the Department of Goldman Sachs, if you haven't noticed. How about the Department, the EPA? The EPA is the Department of Bear Monsanto. Uh, I mean, they're still spraying that poison all over. How is that even possible? I mean, these government agents are completely hijacked. And then people want to get in. I'm going to go. I remember a young guy telling me, I'm going to go work for one of the labs. Dead end. You go to work at Idaho National. By the way, the place is radioactive. Look it up. Livermore, the nuclear lab in NoCal. You know, protest, bringing star power to Earth. Kamala Harris's mom worked there. She was the epidemiologist there. She died young of cancer. Do you know what kind of suicide epidemic they have there look it up it's why how about a sendai how about los alamos i mean these people are insane i mean they all die young don't you see that even pop pop oh oppy dropped you know how young oppenheimer was what did he die from look it up he's younger than hell how about freaking Fermé? i mean how young i mean these people how about abby I mean, these people throw such fucking karma on themselves, you know. Then you got cigarette smoking Obama, you know. Really, that's there's a good role model for you. You know, him and wasn't Biner the opposite guy there? He was the House Majority Leader too. They used to go out back and have a cigarette together. You do know that. I mean, it's so over the top that's political theater that you've fallen for. Nuclear energy, clean, green. Are you out of your fucking mind? This bag is green. This bag is green. This bag is green. I will quote Oppenheimer himself. The greatest psycho, who, probably the number one greatest psycho who ever lived. Because let's get real. Oppenheimer. This is in before the Manhattan Project. Right before, and he said it multiple times during the Manhattan Project. I think he first said this in 1938. Up and when they're talking about putting this thing together, Jay Roberts. Well, let's get real. If the Germans want this weapon, the Germans will have this weapon first. The best nuclear physicists on the face of the planet are Germans. Oppenheimer. He knew that. Everybody knew that. So, the race is to beat the Germans, right? Oh, Oppie? So the United States has intelligence behind enemy lines. Finding out where it is and what, how fast they are, blah, 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 blah. The communique come back in 1943 during the Manhattan Project. It had been rumored that they have no interest in it. They're not doing shit. It was verified. They're speaking in code. Baby never born, mother never pregnant. 
They weren't interested in it. They didn't have it. And if they were interested, they would have had it. It was a propaganda. And so everybody backed out, including Leo Lazar. Leo Lazar, who wrote the letter to FDR, you know, that letter that Einstein said many, 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 many times. My greatest regret in my life was signing that letter. Hell of a way to boil water. You can't watch. Hell of a way to boil a planet. Albert Einstein, by the time he was 35 years old, was a fierce anti-nuclear. He turned philosopher. He turned Quaker. He turned peace activist. He turned anti-bomb. He turned peace. Remember what he used to call war? This is Albert Einstein. Your Lord. I mean, what a genius. The intuity mind. War is a disease. And everybody participated in war is inflicted with the disease. So, in 43, so Leo himself, who wrote the letter, says, no, we, we're, I'm out. Manhattan Project needs to be folded up. We're done. We're not using this. We don't need it. War over. It's done. They don't have it. We can't use this. We're not going to. They all backed down. Of course, except Teller, that monster. I mean, Teller was wanted to put nukes on, you know. I mean, well, that's all back. Everything that Gorbachev and Reagan went back against, you know, the whole Nurka thesis, the disarmament, salt one, salt two, all of it. That's all back then on Balco on chemo. You know, and you can blame Obama for that and Trump, which I, I like, and oh, Biden. I like how you think there's some kind of difference in detail with these people. I mean, the debt is so out of control. I mean, really, you know what the debt, the debt was an issue in the 90s. The debt was an issue, it was between three and four trillion. And people were having a fit about it. So, believe it or not, Democrats and Republicans actually worked together to get rid of the debt. Yes, they worked, and guess how they did it? This is a true story. I mean, look it up. Let's party like it's 1999. Downsizing the military. Keeping the tax rate at 40% on billionaires. Yes, you heard me right. 39.6% on billionaires and corporations. That was the tax rate. And you know who set that tax rate? The Republicans. With the help of... Remember, because they were fiscally responsible then. The Republican Party was fiscally responsible. And they're like, okay, we'll agree. Let's. You're right. This military beast needs to be shut down in the name of the economics of this country. We're not going to freaking shoulder our children and our grandchildren with this. Clinton and the, they work together. Remember, absolutely no inflation for 20 years in this country until Ann Rand Greenspan freaking machine started to roll. You know, lowering rates. When, I, I did the due diligence. We were talking about this yesterday. I used to set the PPI and the CPI here. This is the university did it for the state of Utah. I remember Kyle Matson told me one day, he says, Kevin, I've never seen you get it wrong ever. I says, I know how they said it. I can do it before they did it. You know, I know what the basket is. I mean, it's not that hard. He says, but you said Greenspan's got to raise rates in the spring quarter of 2000. He says, you got it wrong. I've never seen I says, I never got it wrong. Nope. Greenspan got it wrong. And they've had it wrong ever since. I like how people are screaming about the interest rate. The interest rate should be, you know, 8 9% the Fed rate, not 4 Why? Oh, oh okay, but I like how this thing's, oh, 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 that's what's making house prices cost so much. Is the interest rate? No. No. The price of the house, that's called inflation. If we raise this rate to 10%, the price of a house would be cut in half. Then they'd be affordable, right? Then the rates would naturally come down. That's exactly right. We we have the, you know, the tail wagging the dog on Balco on chemo. We use red herrings. I mean, it's it's insanity. So, we've just flooded this economy. Who's the two greatest debtor presidents in history? Who's run more debt? I mean, remember, Obama ran a lot of debt. Oh boy, so did Bush and Cheney since two thousand. But Obama went on Balco. But remember, Obama was president for eight years. Trump was four. We can do math. We can, it's report. Oh, so take the Trump debt and double it. <laughs> I mean, then what's going on right now with 
Yo. The Obiden death? Trump and Obiden have run more death than all the presidents combined in the history of the country. So, Republicans were willing to downsize the military. And they did. They were going to close Hillfield here. I remember. They were closing all kinds of stuff. And they got they got their house in order. We had a surplus. Let's party like it's 1999. Then what happened? Oh. Oh. Florida, 2000. How many president votes did it take to be president of the United States? Six. Five Supreme Court justices and your daddy put them. The, the United States Supreme Court never ruled that. They never ruled that Bush won Florida. They ruled they didn't have time to count. Played Al Gore, I mean, what a piece of work he turned into. He ended up with his $7 million, you know, his $7 billion freaking golden parachute. He ends up on the board of directors of Google and his big house. He's an environmentalist and sucking up seven, dollars $8,000 of energy thing. Tipper divorced him. You do know what. You do know about the massage therapist. I mean, you look it up. Not one, but two. I mean, so these, I mean, it's, it's disturbing. You know how this money poisons these people's brains and they go psycho. I mean, they have this, I don't know, this country's degenerate. I mean, Trump was president for four years. So has been Biden. I mean, well, Biden hasn't yet, but he was VP. And, but, he, you know, the only good thing about oh, Biden is he hates Axelrod and Emmanuel and Obama. Dumber, he's realized. I mean, they were the kingpins of the cover up of Fukushima. Why doesn't he mention the word Fukushima? Which blows my why. Why does Biden not be? I'll tell you why. Same reason the marine biologists. Same reason all these, like the 75 biologists get together and their new study, Kevin Latch, word for word, were saying, yes, nobody ever said this was starvation. I've been saying it the whole time. Document it, doing field observation, boots on the ground, wine full of cancer. Yes, this acute radical collapse of the wells in the Pacific Ocean started in 2012. It's an acute radical starvation event. They don't finish it. This is caused by the, I'm the guy that first named it the blob. I'm the guy that first called calling it the blob. You know, so you you think they're they're so afraid of the truth. Look what they did to me. Look how kept used to Google salmon collapse, <coughs> well collapse, Fukushima meltdowns, any of the said subject matter, the most important subject matter in human history, and. You would get Kevin Lynch, 19 to 20, on the sidebar. I'm competing with CNN, Fox, Operation Foxconn News, you know, CB, I mean, all ABC, all the, you know, puppeteers. And I'm kidding. BBC, Reuters, I'm destroying them. Because I knew how to use the visual genre. They didn't. And I knew how to hold it. I knew the search engine was based on retention, not view count. My retention count was off the hook because I was telling the truth and people were hungry for it. And I told the truth and I did the field work. So they're regurgitating my work, but they won't finish it and say, well, it was a cute radical started in 2012, the blob. Well, what caused the fucking blob? It's like wasting disease on the starfish. Now they're saying, yes, yes, it, it was a cute radical collapse started in 2012. All of it started in 2012, 2011, 2012. I mean, the salmon collapse, I can go on and on and on. That's called an outliner. But what caused wasting? Uh, 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 were... Uh, 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 uh. We're mystified, we're baffled, we're perplexed, we're curious. What did I tag the one yesterday? <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, they have a new one every freaking day. They've used every adjective, they've used every, you know, hyperbole they can dream of. That's not science, that's fraud. The debt is so fucking out of control right now, and no one even talk about it. So their answer was to lower taxes on billionaires. And yet the very people that say, we, the elites are planning something, we got to go with the elites, got, the elites, the elites, the elites. I mean, they're so freaking nuts and insane. These are the same people vote for people that lower taxes to zero. And they, you don't think it making a tax rate of zero on a billionaire empowers the elite. I mean, you're insane. Up is down, black is white. Run. I mean, the country is full. This country is an insane asylum. They're not going to change it. None of these freaks are going to change it. We have to change it from the grassroots. It has to be, you know, the baby boomers are gone. So the echo boomers are freaking gone. They're gone. Or the ignorant have inherited the earth. But the fabric, these secret societies are all back in force, controlling all the judges, controlling all the courts. You know, it's Masonic Zambalco on chemo. They're all Masonics. 
you know, the Federalist Society. I think that society wasn't even started in freaking 19. It's an extension of Skull and Bones. That's all projections. Look it up. These societies have control. So you think the courts are going to save you? Oh, God. You think politics it has to be from the people, the grassroots of the people. You know, and they can't just throw the baby out with the bathwater. You have to say, oh, the Pacific Ocean collapsed. These wells, the stricken ecological catastrophe, the, the fires. We have to use logic. We have to rely on real scientists to pick it up. And it's like church leaders. Church leaders are to blame. I mean, pop, pop, oh, oppy, drop. Oppenheimer knew full well they didn't have it. He dropped it anyway. That war was over. Well, they knew that. Truman knew that Stalin was lined up on the border ready to invade. And, you know, when they divided up the world, he wasn't just going to get all of Eastern Europe, you know, half of Germany. He was going to take Japan, too. And the U.S. says, we want it, and we want to turn it into our a nuclear experimental life. Why would you build 50 nuclear reactors on the island of Japan? You don't, full well knowing you have major tsunamis and major earthquakes. Full well knowing. Well, the same people that build it are sitting up. You know, Kevin Watchett proved we kicked that down. That's the greatest grassroots activist accomplishment in probably world history is the shut down of Senate operating on that earthquake fault and decommissioning and getting it into dry cast container. So we have Diablo Canyon. Why would they leave Diablo Canyon out? Why something that's that dangerous, less from Fukushima that we do not use. Soar and wind are just racing forward and you could go in and out and you could jump on this nuclear bandwagon. You could jump on this and you could go with your Operation Boxcon News propaganda machine, CNN, ABC, NBC, you know, and this propaganda, you know, the Department of Energy, the NEI, these corrupt organizations. Or you could stand on the right side of history for the arc of justice. Oh, it's long. <laughs> it curves towards the sun and righteousness. You're on the wrong side. And you're going to be recording in history. It's like these evangelical leaders who pop, pop, oh, oppy, drop. They never stop. Don't you cross that parallel in North Korea and turn it into hell. Oh, they did it. Why? Why not Vietnam to kill the Viet Cong? <laughs> We're done. Vietnam, we're done. No more wars. No more peace, peace. We don't need this big military machine. You know, because people took to the streets. I mean, the activists, they stopped Vietnam. And we had real reporters. We had real people that cared. We had a conscience in this country then. You know, we still recycle. We were, you know, we, the greens were green. Why did they go to the street? Because they got a draft card. Left, right, rank file. They got a draft card. Now it's just up, out of sight, out of mind. So it was done. It was over. What a happy time, the 1990s. We were just talking about this. Yeah. Me and the president had quite a conversation about the 90s in this campus. Number one school business in the United States. You know, I taught the derivative class. I said, Shh. yeah, I know you did. You know, I taught that class. When they arrested those Saudi kids on this campus, they were in my class on 9-11. Then the gift that keeps on giving happened, 9-11. And we went mad. Pop, pop, oh, oppy, drop, they never stopped. You know, we thought we were done with Vietnam. Pop, pop, oh, oppy, drop, they never stopped. Don't cross that parallel and turn North Korea into hell. They did it. Why? Went, to v went into Vietnam to kill the Viet Cong. Kissinger, Cambodia. Kissinger, Cambodia. Oh, my God. Good Lord. Well, we all grew up in that era. We were done. We were done. It was a happy, peaceful time in the 1990s. Really, no inflation, none. We had a surplus. That was being whacked down. The tax rate was 40%, and people were happy with it and good with it. You know, things were going, but then uh, we're done with war. Oh, then 9-11 happens. And... I'll never forget it. I had a bumper sticker on my car. Bush lied, soldiers died. That's how I got this scar across my face. I'm in front of the White House. I'm protesting, telling Marines. And, you know, my father, the Marine, who was nuked to death in the match, I come from a special forces family. You know, look up my Uncle Clyde. Just look up his obituary. Oh, probably the most decorated fighter pilot, freaking post-World War II in the history of this country. You know, he ran the show in Japan. He was the guy. Here we go. On cue. On wings, we will defend. We went psycho. Went off to Iraq to get Dick Cheney and friends. Democrats giving Dick Cheney standing ovation on the House floor. One of the greatest freaking war pigs who ever walked. He's a criminal. All those guys. Bremer. 
He's a ski instructor. Wolferitz, Cheney, all those guys. Where's uh, Rumsfeld? Oh, he died of cancer. Where's Colin Powell? Oh, he died of multiple, both of multiple myeloma. That's what multiple myeloma is. Blood cancer. Did they go to the Polygon? Did they go over there and visit? I was arguing. I remember with Marines at different people. Don't go. Don't go. They're staging troops at the Polygon. I says, you know, this is where John Stewart was doing all the work. I said, hey, John, why don't you talk about how radioactive the Polygon? We knew it. We were telling him, don't. You cannot stage that. That could be the most radioactive place on earth. That's the old Russian nuclear test site. They left everything there. It's radio. And then they wonder why all these guys are getting cancer coming home. Do you know how many of those guys that went to Iraq and Afghanistan went up to Afghanistan to kill the Taliban? Let's spend, let's loot the entire treasure for trillions missing, billions, I mean trillions, 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 trillions. Just rip it off and loot it to go after what, five, ten thousand Taliban? You know, life, liberty, freaking, we give it all away? Patriot Act on Balco? What the fuck? We give up all our freaking liberties. You know, we, we thrash the First Amendment under the mantra of fear. America, home of the cowards, land of the afraid. When we used to be this, I mean, go back to the 90s. That's all you got to do is just go back to the 90s. Why would we do such a thing? They were Saudis. They were Saudis. Isn't Trump meeting with the Saudis right now? I used to listen to Trump do lectures in New York. And Trump would do lecture after lecture after lecture about 9-11. Just going off on the Saudis. They were Saudi, they're Saudi, they're Saudi. Look at the Sovereign Wealth Act. Do you know Obama vetoed that? Do you know it passed unanimously? What passes unanimously in this Senate and House, in this divided country? That did? How come it's been tied up so the Saudis, what they've done... Now, remember, these Saudis are people that still behead people in public. They stone women to death in public. I mean, they're the greatest violators of human rights on the planet, bar none. And that's our ally. And they were all Saudis that did 9-11. And so the sovereign will, you know, the family sue, 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 sue. Obama vetoed that. You know, the veto got overruled. Did you know that? But, you know, another campaign promise by Trump that he lied about. Biden do anything? They all bow to these Saudis. Why? Because these, I don't get it. It blows my mind. So they were Saudis, so we invade Af Iraq? No Iraq, you laid a finger on anybody. You, you have church leaders in the name of Christ. Christianity is named after Jesus Christ. Fill the afflicted, feed the poor, throw the money changers out of the temple. That long haired freaking radical who's about peace and love and the underprivileged. That 33-year-old Jewish rabbi stood up to these people. Look what they did to him. Here's Trump with a Bible. Are you kidding me? I mean, they asked, he, can't, he couldn't quote a freaking verse out of the Bible. Not a verse. I can hundreds of them, you know. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. <laughs> or Kevin reached into the bag and he slung the stone and he slung the nuclear giant in the forehead and the soup can embedded in the New York Giants' forehead, and they, he felt, read the rest of the scripture. <laughs> Prepare a table in front of me. You know, I was given two months to live this whole time in vertical condition. Lay me down on the burned out pastures. He guide me, he comfort me. For the angels, they watch out over me. I fight for her, she fights for we. My cup runneth over. On chemo. I'm about, I'm alive. I'm alive. Isn't my story, shouldn't my story be everyone's story? Look, this guy was given two months to live. Just the fact that I go into the bumper on 11, 11, 11, my place in time is Einstein. The last, as Einstein would say, the anti nuclear the peace activist. Well, shouldn't my story be here? I've given two months to live. I mean, this has been brutal. I mean, I've been in critical condition nearly the whole time till now. I'm not in critical condition for the first time in, you know, over 12 years. I have no chance. I have ML de Nuvo. It's an unsurvivable. I reach out to people all the time. They're going to cure themselves. I mean, why don't you listen to me? My path. I talk about it all the time. My juicing. My wife. I didn't have a transplant. I was too sick. I had three rounds of chemo, heavy chemo. But, you know, I had open heart surgery twice. My heart's been ripped out twice. My doctor yesterday, two days ago, whose name, Chelsea, she says, I'm from, my mom named me. Yeah, I know that. The biologist. We're part of the college, you know, the powers there be. I fight for her, she fights for we. There's a reason I'm alive. How? I'm in the 1% studies. I mean, my doctor over there, who's the football team doctor here, he's the team doctor, Dr. Madsen here. He could 
apologize. He says, boy, did I blow that for five years. You know, you kept telling him, it was your heart valve. And I kept telling him, it was neuropathy. I said, it wasn't your fault. You were listening to Colado, the cardiologist, who I would tell him right to my face, it's, I come from a family of heart doctors. I knew what it was. And, but Mike Lee kicked me off Medicaid after I forked over a million dollars of tests and stuff. What a story. What a story. So he always says, every new young intern that comes in here, I say, here, look at this. When you come in, I gather them around. Look at this resume. You know, it's like in there, you talk about the whole work. David Goff saved my life. He had to reconstruct my entire order. It ripped. She says, I don't know how you're alive. I had to harvest an artery. You know, I have a pacemaker now. I lost my teeth. I lost my gallbladder over this 12, 13. I was brutalized. Life Pacific Ocean. My path mirrors her path. We fight back, you know, we're compromised for the rest of our being, and no doubt I'm compromised now. I have a pacemaker. Right up my whole and it should have never happened. Just like the Pacific Ocean, it should have never happened. Build nuclear axis on the ring, and then the answer is just to cover it up. See no nuclear energy. I mean the nuclear energy have no emperors have no clothes. If you don't know that child's book, read it. That's what this is. How can you, you cannot be hypnotized? You're politically poisoned by political dogma. Operation Fight Will, we know. So, political television, they know that. They did it. I mean, when Operation Fox on News run, I knew we were SOL. You know, and then CNN's followed suit, ABC, NBC, all of them, all of them are nothing but political freaking. They're dogma reinforcement television. And the visual genre is so powerful. You know, just like Oppenheimer, the movie. That movie will move. Oh, well, it did. And if you haven't seen that movie and you think that movie's bad, you're wrong. No, granted, it's showing in Japan now. They didn't show the carnage. Well, no one's ever seen that carnage to this day. Why? That's still classified? Because they lied about that. How many dead? I mean, the death and destruction. If you saw the real footage there, you would be so. You'd be like Kevin Lynch. You'd be an anti-nuclear for life, fighting every day against these monsters. Out of sight, out of mind, right? They know that. The visual genre is millions of times more powerful than the written. That's why I'm not a book writer. That's why movies move culture. That's why visual genre, I knew that. I knew how. I knew what I was doing, but their answer was to kettle me, but they were too late. They're not putting my lightning back in the Pandora's box. I flipped that freaking jar behind my back and shattered it with my axe baseball bat. They're not putting my pace back in the tube. It's out. It's It was out. They showed up to this too late. My truth, it's out there. You can, you can ignore me. Go ahead, brand yourself in history. Go ahead. Nuclear energy is clean. Green. Uh, TikTok. I juice every day. That's my favorite. I was on the beet juice for a lot, but it's got the turmeric in it. You know, I walk, I get tired, I juice, you know, but the bottom line is I stood up against these guys. I went rogue. It doesn't really matter if they strip me, if they take everything away from me. They did it to Semmelweis. I knew it had to be that way. I knew it had to be transparent. I knew I had to be, you know, organic. And I did it. And I'll continue to do it. I fight for her. She fights for me from the sea. Kevin D, we're part of the ecology. You literally stood back. The whole world stood back and let them gang the mother. The mighty blue lady. The Pacific Ocean is the staff of all life. And any biology doesn't know that. I said it's going to break the chain. You know, big fish eat little fish. The staff of life comes from the sun, you know, into the water. That's how plankton is formed. You know, and then what did the 60,000 pound well say to the smallest teeny fry to the upper California purple urchin? Fukushima killed my food. The well replied, we too can see. They're plankton feeders. The only ones that are not plankton feeders are orcas, and they're out of their mind right now. Moved out of their domain, they're starving to death. 
you know, I'm standing right there when that fin back, I've been watching that fin back for 22, uh, for two weeks in Pacific Beach, play back the tape. I said, it's going to wash up scarf dead. I'm right there when it did. They're interviewing SeaWorld. Some old guy, and then some other guy from Scripps comes on and says, oh, it's a bite. What are you talking about, bites? It's a starvation event. Everything's in symphony, including the fires and the trees, and you can go into denial about this. This great ecological catastrophe, the great Pacific genocide, as I named it. First, you hypothesize the knowledge. They're lying, they're lying. These are full blown out bell They're going to circle the wagons, they're going to lie. It's going to break the chain. These are full blown out bell It's going to cause these suns to burrow into the Pacific Ocean. It's going to cook the ocean. It's going to cause heat bubble over the Western It's going to cause plutonium fire. It's fine. Never happened in history. Everything that I said to a fine science, the greatest ecological catastrophe since the crack of toe, and I think it's even bigger than that. <laughs> That was in 416. Blanketed the earth. I mean, it changed everything. This changes everything. What took down the old USSR? The invasion of Afghanistan and the nuclear meltdowns at, meltdown, singular, at Chernobyl. What took down the old USA? Japan is the 51st state. I'm here, you got to see. The invasion of Afghanistan and the nuclear meltdowns, not singular, plural. The Fukushima, Japan, were the down people. Just three words left. Pop, pop, go up, he dropped. They never stop. It's just pork. And they think the zenith of life. Ask not what I could do for my country. Ask what I could loot for my country. Free money for all. Not for me. I don't want. I don't make a living off other people's taxes. I don't. I don't. Yeah, I rely on. Grass rooters. It's where the wind blows. It's where. So remember, they used to nest right there. Remember that nesting spot? Why'd they tear that out so they can't nest? Because they hate the animals here in Utah. They hate the ecology. That's been proven. They're hunting mountain lions year round now, I see. Well, they hunt these guys. They've destroyed the drain, the swamp. <laughs> Drain the swamp. Every one of these guys said that. They are, I mean, they didn't drain the swamp. They drained the wetlands. They think they're not connected to the ocean. They think they're not part of the ecology. It's where the wind blows. It's where the water flows. Why do I use that song? Well, everybody loved her, didn't they, in the 90s? How beautiful was she? Roxette. You know, she died of cancer, post-Fukushima, young. So many have. I go back to Olivia Newton-John. She played right there in the Union, right there in the 70s. And then in the D event center again, she got cancer. She was in remission. She went to Fukushima, Japan. To save Fukushima. It was her last concert. I mean, at least she tried. She went down with a fight, didn't she? She went down trying to call attention. Little invisible germs right there beat some wise to death. Huh. Can't smell nuclear fallout, can't see it, can't taste it. Oh, North Korea, they just had a 100 million degree for 45 seconds. Well, what do you think these three core meltdowns are? I got news. Boiling all the Earth's water over and over and over is not going to cool the Earth. <laughs> it's heated up the Earth. I mean, and you've all fallen for this. Just like let's invade Iraq when they were Saudis. I mean, let's invade Afghanistan when they were Saudis. I mean, it's insanity. Pop, pop, a loppy drop. They never stop. Don't you dare cross that parallel and turn North Korea into a living hell. Went to Vietnam to kill the Viet Cong, kissing your Cambodia, kissing your Cambodia. Oh, we're done, we're done. Oh, 9-11. The 20th bomber is back home in Saudi. Look it up in Saudi. Went off to Iraq to get Big Cheney, uh, Wolf Ritz and Brimmer, and the military industrial war pigs, big old sacks of $100 bills, billions and trillions missing. Went off to Afghanistan to kill the Taliban. Oligarchs make it rain in Ukraine. The military industrialized war pigs, beware. Wasn't that 
Eisenhower? Wasn't he a Republican? He advocated for the tax rate to be 50% on billionaires. Look it up. Middle East to be in Gaza. If you think starving to death children has anything to do with war, I got a war I want to sell you in Iraq and Afghanistan. This country, it's got to change from the grassroots. Nuclear energy is not green. It is not clean. In fact, it's the opposite. One word, Fukushima, the great Pacific genocide, the greatest PhD in human history. And I'm a butcher, what's a cow? I'm a baker, what's a cake? I'm a fisherman, what's a boat? How come they haven't gone crazy about this? Huh. I'm a biologist. What's the nuclear meltdowns at Fukushima? Stay in tune.